Let's stand as we read God's word together today. Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. And uh, let's begin reading from verse number one. The Bible said, The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pit and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded, confounded and covered their heads because the ground is chaped. For there, is, there was no rain in the earth. The plowmans were ashamed. They covered their heads. Yea, the hinds also calved in the field and forsook it because there was no grass. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snipped up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. Notice verse number seven says, O Lord, thou, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backsliding are many. We have sinned against thee. O the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof, in the time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land? and as a wavering man that turneth aside to tarry for a night. Why shouldest thou be as a man astonished, astonished as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. I want you to look with me to Jeremiah, the eighth chapter, uh, the verse number 20 and 21, 22, uh, quickly with us this morning. Jeremiah, the eighth chapter, verse number 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the herd of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black, astonishment has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the earth of the daughter of my people recovered? I want you to stretch forth your hand this way and ask God for his holy anointing power. Father, I want you to notice verse number seven and verse number eight for my text here this morning. Notice what the Bible said is, he said, oh, Lord, this was the prayer of Jeremiah. He said, oh, Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backsliding are many. We have sinned against thee. But notice what he said. He said, oh, the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in the time of trouble, I believe the hope for America tonight is God. I believe the hope for our, our country is Christ. Amen. If there was a time that our nation needs a revival, it's in the hour that we are living in. Notice what he said, Oh, the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in the time of trouble. Why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land? And as a wavering man that turneth aside to tarry, for a night. When I began to look at this, these verses, and as Jeremiah began to state here in verse number eight, he said, why should I be as a stranger in the land? I want to deal with that for just a little bit, a little bit this morning. But we see in this 14th chapter, and we read of a drought that had come to the nation of Judah. They are a pitiful condition, for there has been no rain for a while. You see, the dictionary defines drought as a lack of rain, content, long continued dry weather. The world encyclopedia says of, of drought, drought is a condition that results 
when the average rainfall for an area drops below the normal amount for a long period of time. In other words, it's a prolonged time of not enough rain. And I've seen droughts that come our way hadn't rained for a while and I'd been and seen the corn fields and how the corn would be laying over to its side because of a lack of rain. I asked one farmer one time, I said, why is the corn laying on its side like it is? He said, well, what it's doing is crying for rain. And I thought, my mind, that's the way a lot of people are doing today. They're crying for rain that needs rain, but Jeremiah describes to us a physical drought that are terrible in the extreme. I've heard men that plant gardens say, listen, if it doesn't rain, we're not gonna have a crop, not gonna have a harvest, amen to God. But did you know that there are not only physical droughts, but there are spiritual droughts too. You see, as I travel preaching uh, meetings, I I am finding that there are many people uh, in the church that are suffering from a spiritual drought. Amen. They're going through a prolonged period of no rain. They're coming through a period of dry weather spiritually. Their spiritual rainfall has dropped below normal for a long period of time. And my, my, I don't know about you, but I'm hearing the cry, we need a rain. We need a revival. We need a time of refreshing. We need God to move. All oh, my many churches today, I'm telling you what, the reason they don't have church on Sunday night is because a lack of rain and people are starving. They're going here and there looking and seeing that they can find a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. But you know what? I'm praying that God is going to send us a revival, a rain, a Pentecost like we've never seen before. I want you to understand that drought does not happen all at once. No, it doesn't. It does not come from one day of no rain, but it comes from a prolonged time of no rain in our soul. A man don't backslide overnight. No, no, it's a prolonged time of lack of rain, spiritual rain that I'm talking about here today. Amen to God. But all the question is, how long have it been since you had a spiritual uh, gully washer in your soul? Oh my, if there was a time that the church needs the river, is in the hour that we're living in. Oh yes, we need a rain. Uh, I'm talking about of healing. We need a rain of deliverance. And we need a rain of the Holy Ghost. Amen to God. There's three things that are lacking in the church today. Thank God that is uh, the saving souls. A lot of people say, well, I'd like to see miracles. Amen. The greatest miracles of all is when a man comes down to an altar. Thank Thank God that's been in a prolonged time of a drought, but he comes back home, thank God, and he lays before God, and God begins to flood his soul and gives him what he needs. I like to see when sinners don't know God, don't know anything about God, they make their way down to an altar. That's what I want to see. Amen. Oh, yes, I like to see the blinded eyes open. I like to see the deaf ears unstop. I like to see the lame walk again. Oh, yes. But the most thing that I'm interested in here, thank God, is to see somebody come back to God. Somebody gets touched by the Spirit and the power of the Almighty God. Oh, God, help us. You see, we need to be careful because the results of a drought is very devastating. Amen, I said a drought, spiritual drought is a very devastating. In the physical, if rain does not come soon, let me tell you what's gonna happen. The crop will die. Amen, I said the crop will die. 
Second of all, starvation will set in. I said starvation will set in. You see, we see this pitiful condition about in Jeremiah's day because there was no rain for a while. Why? Because God sent the, the natural disaster upon Judah during the final years because of their unfaithfulness to him and his covenant. You see, the people had rejected God, the springs of living water. Now they would lose the supply of the natural water. Oh, yes. Amen. We wonder why we're seeing disaster come upon our land today. America is is in trouble. But the only hope for America is a revival one more time. I said a revival one more time. America getting back on her knees again and crying out to God in a prayer of repentance. Oh God. You see, when there's no rain, the crop will die. Starvation will set in. And eventually, Death will come. I said death will come. You see, the same is true in the spiritual rain. If you don't get some spiritual rain, you're going to eventually die. Oh, yes, some of you may be in a drought here this morning, and you need a rain. And my, you need it now. I said you need it now. You can't afford to put it off any longer. Let me tell you something. If you were to uh, closely examine uh, the lives that are, that are in our spiritual desert, you would discover this. There is no song in their soul. I said there's no song in their soul. There's no praise in their lips. The, oh my, the life, oh my, of God of the Spirit is gone. My God, there's no spring in their steps. The glow of God is gone off of their face. And then there is no joy in their life. Are you hearing this preacher today? Thank God when we was oh, under the spout and my, we was where we ought to have been with God. Thank God there was a song. We woke up every morning singing the praises of God. We would go through the day singing the praises of God. Amen. Everybody knew that we had God in our life. Amen. But because of a drought, a prolonged time, amen, we've lost our song. But I'm saying, my God, let's get it back. I said, let's get it back. Let's pray that, oh God, will give us our praise and our worship back again. Amen. We had praise on our lips. Didn't matter if you went to the grocery store. Didn't matter if you went to the mall. Didn't matter if you went on your job. You had praise upon your lips. My, you had the life in the spirit. Oh yes, before you, you got in this, this drought. It didn't happen overnight. It was a prolonged time where you've been and the condition of that, the glow of God is off of your face. Oh yes, there's no joy. I've heard people say, are they a Christian? And they, you know, it seemed like they're not happy. They're, they're always frowning. They're no, there's, you don't see no life about them. Amen to God. But why? It didn't happen overnight. It was a prolonged time. Amen. In this condition, I'm telling you, friend, if you don't, if you're not careful, you allow things to come in your life that will, oh my, it will steal your joy. It'll steal the praise from your lips. Amen to God. Oh my, it'll cause you not to come to the wells of living water and drink from it. But I'm saying, my God, we need another charge of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to God. The question that I want to ask you this morning, what are the causes of a drought? What is the cause of a drought? You see, spiritual drought are usually caused by two things. And I want to preach it to you today. Amen. First of all, sin will cause a spiritual drought. 
Second of all, spiritual neglect. Neglecting the things that we need to be doing will cause a spiritual drought. When I began to look at sin in the book of Deuteronomy, God is talking to Moses and he was telling Moses that after he was dead, that Israel would forsake God and turn to sin. Then God told them what would happen if, if, if to them if they did that. Because the Bible says in Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, verse 17 says, then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them. You see, sin causes God to hide his face from Israel. He no longer looks down upon them. Oh, yes, sin will cause God to hide his face from us too. Amen to God. Oh, my, look at America. You wonder why. Oh, my, there's drought, there's famines, there's pestilence, and there's floods, and there's earthquakes. Uh, I believe because what's bringing all of this on is because of sin. Oh, yes, you may think you can get by with sin, ladies and gentlemen, but you will never get by with sin. You say, well, Brother Coley, I didn't come to hear all of that. You may not, but I felt this so urgent that God began to say, speak to my heart. The reason that people's life is in the condition that they're in today is because of sin. Amen. And my mind, when we sin, there is a penalty to sin because the Bible said the wages of sin is is death. Oh, God, help us. The Bible said in Proverbs 28, verse 13, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Oh, I don't know about you, but I need a little mercy here today, don't you? I think Fort's Lake needs some mercy. I think our surrounding needs some mercy. Hallelujah to God. But listen to what he said again. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. You may try to think you're going to get by with it, but you're not going to prosper. Sin will reveal itself. Sin will have a payday. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. What are you saying? Why are you preaching this? I want some rain. I want some Holy Ghost rain. I want to see people delivered and set free by the power of God. If we want God to move in us, we must remove sin from our lives. What does the Bible say in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14? If my people, he wasn't talking about the people down in the taverns. No, but he was talking to the church. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, oh my, he said then, and turn from their wicked ways, he said then will I hear from heaven. Oh yes, and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. I'm telling you what, we need that kind of revival. We wonder why God has become a stranger to, the, to this land. He, my, he cannot look upon sin. Oh, yes, you see, even it talks in that same verse, the, the children went to the water holes, but there was no water. They brought their vessels, in other words, their lives. Uh, amen, but they went home empty. I don't, I don't know about you, but it grieves my heart when people can come to the altars today uh, and they're going back home just like they came. Why, there's nothing to drink from. Oh, my, I'm telling you folks, we need a rain. Thank God that all my that can fill the vessels. Thank God that's among us. God help us. You see, in the great Hebrides revival, a handful of men met in a barn and prayed three nights a week. All night, for several months. I want you to get that this morning. A handful of men. I don't know how many it was. It could have been five. It could have been 10. It could have been 12. It could have been 20. I don't know. But a handful of men in a barn and prayed three nights a week. 
all night for several months, begging God for revival. You can't hardly get folks to come and pray just an hour. You can't hardly get folks today to come before church and pray 20 minutes or 30 minutes before church. I'm too busy. You see, when you get hungry, the Bible said they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Oh, yes. But here they were. They prayed three nights a week, all night for several months. How many ever heard of all night prayer meeting? Amen. We used to have them years ago. Oh, yes, I wish to God we could get back having those all-night prayer meetings. We may see something happen. But oh, I'm going to tell you, but here was men became dedicated to the cause because they wanted to see a revival. And one night, around two in the morning, one of the men stood up and quoted Psalms 24, verse 3 and 5. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and pure hearts, who have not lifted his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings of the Lord and the righteousness from the God of, of his salvation. He said to that handful of men, we have sought God for months for revival. But we cannot have one as long as our hands are not clean. Are you hearing me? And our hearts are not pure. We must confess every known sin and allow God to remove them. Folks, this is what the church got to get back. We got to get back with a spirit of humbleness, a spirit of humility, and begin to cry. Revival, it's not just going to come on our you know, we think good merits of what we do, but we got to come clean to God. We got to have clean hands and a pure heart. And oh my, I'm telling you what, if there's anything that's in our hearts and our life that should not be there, I'm telling you, we got to get rid of it. I know churches today are allowing a lot of things that are going on, and, and I believe it, it has grieved the Holy Ghost. And I'm afraid sometimes if we're not careful, we're going to allow things to come in in our own life that will hinder God reigning upon us. Amen to God. I'm telling you what. But listen here. They began to pray and they confessed their sins and all of a sudden, hallelujah, God stepped out of heaven and revival came. Oh, hallelujah. I said revival came and the drought was over. Amen to God. Aren't you, aren't you wanting to see the drought to be over? Amen. But oh, but till we can come to an altar of repentance. Hallelujah. And begin to confess our sins. Amen. Unto God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I need you to come. And I've got sin in my life that's hindered me from the wall with you God help us I said God help us to get back to that place he said oh he said oh Lord though our iniquities testify against us do thou it for thy name's sake for our backsliding are many and we have sinned against thee and then he said oh the hope of Israel the Savior thereof in the time of trouble. Oh, yes. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Jeremiah stated the harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black astonishment have taken a hold of me. And then he said, is there? No bomb in Gilead. Is there no physician there? He asked the question. When then, why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Is there not a bomb in Gilead? Is there not a, some ointment 
that we can rub, that can bring a, a soothing, a healing. Oh, yes, is there not a physician there, my God, that can declare the cause? I'm telling you what, we need God to move we need another bomb of Gilead. We need something to come and heal the hurt of a daughter. Hey, man, you'll be surprised how many people today are suffering, how many people are going through this and through that. Oh, my. I'm telling you what, it's because of sin, and sin will hinder the progress of God. How many believes that sin will hinder your life from walking with God? Come on now. I'm praying, oh God, we need a revival. Come and heal our land. Come and bring deliverance to the captive. Hallelujah, those that are hungry for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, feel those. Hallelujah to God. I'm telling you, when those men, I'm telling you, prayed through and confessed everything, revival came, the drought was over. Oh yes, if we confess every known sin and forsake them and turn back to God wholeheartedly, God would come down in the mist again to us. Then second of all, and I'm hurrying with this, I look at that spiritual neglect. You know, many times we do not forsake God altogether. No, no, but we simply neglect God. When we neglect our prayer life, we are headed for a spiritual drought. Our only avenue to God is in prayer. Are you hearing me? Preacher, you don't understand. I, 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 I'm, I'm so caught up in my business. I'm so caught up in, in my affair of what I do. Oh, yes, but I'm telling you what, you wonder why you're on a spiritual low. It didn't happen overnight. It happened on a prolonged time. Amen, being, you spiritually neglected your own self with God. Amen to God. We have given, you know, we have been given a promise that if you pray to the Father in secret, he will reward you openly. James put it another way when he said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen to God. You see, if we confess our sins and pray fervently, God will help us. I said, God will help us. How many today, you said, Brother Cauley, I want God to help me. Amen. I believe God will do it. You don't understand, preacher. My life has been in a dilemma in my for some a long time. And my I've been searching for an answer. But today you can find your answer by coming and kneeling at an altar of prayer and begin to give it all over to God. Amen. Let me tell you, you can't work your problems within yourself. No, no. Oh my, it's gonna take God and you. You, amen. You got to confess it. Then God will come to your rescue. Praise the Lamb of God. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In Uganda, when someone is saved, they instruct them to go out into the bush and find them a place away from everyone and pray there and meditate upon God. I mean, I heard one man, well, I had a, my uncle Fred years ago. He had an old place down by the Creole paper mill. Place there, and he'd always go, it was a, out in the woods, there was a big old stop. But Uncle Fred, I've heard him say it a million times. He would drive there and park his car and go out there by that old stump and get down and talk to God. You know, in Uganda, they instructed them to go out in the bush and find them a place away from everyone and pray there and meditate upon God. I'm not telling you you got to go out in the woods, but you can go into a closet somewhere. You can go into a bedroom, in my mind, and steal away and pray. Stay there and meditate upon God. 
You see, as they go daily to that place, talking about those in Uganda, a path is worn in the sand. If they neglected to go for a day or two, the grass began to grow up in the path. So the Ugandas judged how much you prayed and meditated on God by how much grass was in your path. And I thought today, how much grass has grown up in your path? Oh, yes. You see, when we neglect prayer, you can expect a spiritual drought. When you, when you fail to pray, it's going to happen. You wonder why, God, I don't feel you no more, but have you prayed? I don't want to no show of hands this morning, but I just wonder how many got up this morning you prayed before you come to church. I just wonder how many of you got alone with God and prayed and sought God for your life in this service. You see, we wonder why sometimes we go to come to church and everything is not just clicking or everything is, it seems like it's dead. Maybe it's because we're not praying like we ought to. I believe, my God, my God, before I complain about how dry the service is, I must look in the mirror myself and ask myself the question, have you prayed and sought God today? Come on now. Woo. You see, when we fail to pray, there's a spiritual drought would hit our soul. When we neglect the Bible study, we're headed for a spiritual drought. God gave his word to clean us. Jesus said, now are ye clean through the words that I have spoken to you. Hallelujah. God gave his word to spiritually nurse us. And God's word is our spiritual food. Amen to God. Oh my God gave us his word to guide us. What are you talking about? It's a lamp unto our feet and a light to our pathway. Is this all right today? Hallelujah to God. God gave his word so that we would not sin against him. Oh, yes. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 16 through 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, doctrine is what is right. Reproof is what is not right. Correction is how to get right. I want to say those three things again. I wanted to drive it home to us. Doctrine is what is right. I'm glad I got this Bible. It's my doctrine. Hallelujah. Reproof is what is not right, but correction is how to get right. So if we neglect God's word very long, we're going to die. Hallelujah. I said, if we neglect God's word very long, we're going to die. Did you know that it is not only a lack of reading and studying God's word that can lead you to a spiritual drought, but also a lack of hearing the word of God? There's times that we come to church and we hear the preacher, but we don't hear the preacher. Amen, if you get what I'm talking about. We hear him, but we don't do what we hear. We go right on in our own ways and we wonder why we're not seeing what we need to be seeing. We wonder why our homes are in the mess that is in. We wonder why our marriage is in the shape that is in today. It's because we're not praying and we're not reading God's word. There's a spiritual neglect in the hour that we're living in. My God, my God, I hope I can ring a bell to us here today. We need God. 
I said we need God and we need a God in a bad way. Hallelujah. The only way that we're going to see God move in our hearts and our lives and our homes and our children, we got to find a place to pray. Oh, God help us. We got to find time to study God's word. Thank God. Let me hurry over this and I'm closing. So if we neglect God's word very long, we're going to die. In Amos, the eighth chapter, verse number 11, we read, Behold, the day comes, saith the, the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the word of God. That's where we at. Hearing what thus saith God. Did you know that you could be in the middle of a spiritual draft with a gully washer going on all around you? Oh, yes, and still miss it. Amen. Why? Because you refuse to hear and you refuse to apply God's word to your life. When we neglect God's house, we are headed for a spiritual drought. I just didn't feel like going today. That's not going to go over with God when he took all of his sins upon us. And though he didn't feel like going to the cross, but he said, not my will, but thy will to be done. Though he was in pain and suffering because of the stripes that put upon him and slaps upon him, but yet he was willing to carry the load up to the, uh, up to the mount of Calvary, hallelujah, and to there to live, to die there for your sins. I'm telling you what, when we neglect him and pray to him and, and meditating on his word and not being faithful to him, we're in trouble. The Bible says, I'll show you how important it is to go to church. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 and 25, it says, not forsaking the assembling ourselves together, as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That is the commandment of God. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You know what, folks? I need you as well as you need me. We've got to have one another. Why? That we can encourage one another in the Lord because that day is coming quickly. I said that day is coming quickly quickly. Amen. Oh my, my. Thank God. Oh my. I feel the coming of Christ is right at hand. Praise the Lamb of God. We cannot stop neglect. We can stop neglecting God. We can pray like we need to. We can study God's word like we need to. And we can be faithful to God's house like we need to. Amen. Then we can pray for rain. Thank God. Listen here. The Bible said in Zechariah 10 and 1 said, as ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. Hallelujah. God said, ask for the rain. Amen. Oh my, you know what? I'm ready to ask God for the rain tonight, today. Hallelujah. I'm ready for a gully washer. I want to see God move again. Praise the Lamb of God. I want to see our young people shout. I want to see a middle-aged folks come to the altar and rejoice again with joy. I want to see different ones, thank God, that's been away and felt the presence of God in a long time. You know, I sit and then my get phone calls after phone calls and, and I hear people on the other end of the line say, Preacher, I don't know what's going on. I can't understand it. I'll tell you what, it's a lack of rain and it's a life of dedication to God. Hallelujah to God. But when the church realized that we've got to get back to that altar and pray, like we should then we're going to see healings in our homes in our lives amen in our marriages oh God I'm telling you what a 
I've never seen the hurt and the sorrow that we've been in for a while. Amen. And I was praying other, I was praying yesterday. I came out here and I said, God, I don't want to see no more funerals here at this church. No. I'm tired of seeing the hurt. I'm tired of seeing the pain. Oh, yes. We need a balm of Gilead. We need some ointment of God to touch our hearts and our lives. We need the Holy Ghost to move and touch us again. Hula Bahanda Bahaya. Listen, the Bible said the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I'm telling you what, but Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to start enjoying some life of joy. Hallelujah. The only way we can get this is let the Holy Ghost begin to reign upon us again and say, Lord, I'm tired of the drought. I'm tired of the drought. Amen. But I want some rain. I want you to cultivate our life. Mold us and make us. Oh, God, make this vessel what it ought to that you can pour yourself into. Amen. How many today, you say, Brother Cauley, I feel we need to reign. Let me see your hand. Oh, I want you to stand with me as I come in quickly with a song of this morning. The hope of Israel, the Savior thereof, in the time of trouble. I don't have to paint you a vivid picture how America's in trouble today. You know it. You listen to the news, see the news, what's going on in our nation today, you realize that we're in a terrible crisis. We are in trouble like we've never seen before. Can I ask the question today? Has it because the church had neglected their, its prayer life? Neglected reading the Bible, hearing the Bible, doing what the Bible says? Have we forsaken the laws of God? And we're walking in our own way, doing our own thing? Is that the reason America is in the shape that she's in? You see, years ago, men got tired of seeing what the enemy were doing, and they began to humble themselves and meet together and pray and seek the face of God, and God turned situations around. I don't know, but I sense it through the Holy Ghost. There are several of you here today. you got situation. And the only way that God that it can be turned around, God's got to do it. God has got to do it. Oh yes. Your soul is crying for rain. I talked to a man the other day and he said, Brother Cauley, I long to be in a service where the Holy Ghost is falling. I long to be in a service where people are shouting and praising God. It's a long time since I've heard from heaven. There's been no message given out in, in tongues and then there hadn't been no interpretation. God speaking to the church. And I thought, my God, the reason is a lack of rain. Because I don't know, many of you have known when, when the clouds begin to cover and they begin to come when there's been a dry day. And my, you can smell the, the aroma of the rain. It seems like it just puts life in the air and you can take a deep breath. And that's what the church needs again. We need to be able to breathe deep and feel the breath of God breathing upon us again. And I'm saying, God, send that rain, that Holy Ghost rain that will touch the hearts of every believer. Hallelujah. That our faith can be renewed. Our life can be renewed in you, God. While they're singing a song this morning, 
I want you, those that you said, Brother Cauley, I feel we need a rain. I need a rain in my own life. I want you to step out from right where you at. This is not a sign that you're backslid, no, but you need a rain.